Buhari was a child when we negotiated Nigeria. Afani Ferry leader Adebanjo slams president over not negotiable claims. Welcome to the news and thank you for tuning in to listen. The leader of the Yoruba Social Cultural Organization, Afani Ferry Chief Ayo Adebanjo on Friday, lambasted President Muhammad Buhari for saying that Nigerians' unity and existence is not negotiable. According to Punch, Adebanjo said that Buhari, who is 78 years old, ought to have known that Nigerians' independence and terms of unity were negotiated in the 1950s, but the president was then a small boy at the time, hence his ignorance. Adebanjo, who is 93, said, while said this while responding to President Buhari, Buhari's Independence Day speech, President Buhari has stated that the unity of Nigeria remains non-negotiable. But the Afani Ferry leader explained that in 1953, when the North opposed the call for independence and rather advocated Araba secession, Chief Obafemi Awolowo and Dr. Nnam Jazikiwe convinced the Northern leadership headed by Ahmed Belu to negotiate the terms of their unity and ultimately their independence from British rule. Adeban just said that Buhari is, <laughs> that Buhari is talking nonsense. These are the kind of things that cause trouble. How can the president of a multinational, multilingual and multi-ethnic society say the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable? We negotiated the unity of Nigeria in, in 1954 before independence. The 1960 constitution was a product of negotiation that arose from the London Constitutional Conference. Of course, I cannot blame him. He was still in primary school at the time, so he could not understand. He should go back to the records. Before the Constitutional Conference, the country was being run in a youth as I beg your pardon, as a unitary government, and that was caused. That was what caused the crisis. What when we got to that conference, Chief Awole will re-educated them that you cannot run the country as a unitary system. It was at that conference that Inam Yazikiwe was converted to federalism, and when he reports when he returned from that conference, Azikiwe at the airport declared that federalism was imperative. It was in the Daily Times of 1954. Adebanjo added that the 1960 constitution gave all the regions financial autonomy such that every region was able to control its own destiny. And after the military coup of 1966 and Nigeria became a unitary state, things began to go downhill. He therefore argued for restructuring, which he claims must be embraced for the country to progress. He further noted that the 1999 constitution which he said was not based on fairness, but exploitation of the South should be adequate, adequately looked into. The Afani Ferry leader also pointed the blame finger on the Vice President Yemi Osibanjo and the All Progressive Congress leader Bola Sinembo for paying lip service to restructuring. Adibanjo said that it was unfortunate that Obas, I beg your pardon, that Osibanjo and Sinembo, who promoted restructuring, restructuring are now pretending as if. It was not included in the FPC manifesto during the election campaigns in 2015. Doesn't know the meaning of negotiable from speaking the language they understand to a state being described as a dot. Being a dot in a country described non-negotiable means that we are not united because dots don't join together. Now our amalgamation through marriage by force implemented by implemented by Lugat for British economic gains as if we were one nation from the beginning. Local imperialists must crumble like British, though it may tarry surely, it must come to pass. Now, saying that Nigerians' unity is not negotiable is somehow seeming like they are asking for more blood to be shed. Forgive me, I do not mean to sound rude. But it is only fairness and justice. It is only when there is fairness in not just one region or one tribe, in all the regions of a country. For this federalism to be true and for us to come to the realization that we are still in the democratic system of government and that we truly love ourselves to be together then what we are supposed to do is to ensure fairness in the land. Ensure fairness in all the regions in Nigeria. Ensure fairness. Ensure there is no nepotism. Ensure there is no one-sided appointment. 
ensure fairness in the allocation of funds to states, ensure fairness in the supremacy of the law, ensure fairness by stopping the intimidation and the marginalization. Stop referring to a particular region that they are a dot. How can you say that? How can you say they are not, it is non-negotiable when it is certain that lives will be lost in this process? I weep. I weep. I keep saying it. God bless Mr. Ex-President Dr. Ebele Goodluck Jonathan. God bless his, God bless him wherever he is because he is the only president as far as I can remember that said that it, it is not worth him to stay in office if one drop of blood should be shed on his behalf. This is somebody that had the interest of Nigerians at heart. But at that time, Nigeria would be clouded by whatever they were beclouded with. They were beclouded with the change. And now this change has come and it is not sitting well with us. Things have gone from bad to worst. Things have gone haywire. Insecurity everywhere. There is marginalization and intimidation all around the country. And you keep saying that Nigeria unity is not negotiable. It is not, it is not supposed. It is only going to be saying that Niger you really, really do not want people to leave. This cessation and restructuring that is being called for is so that lives will be saved. I keep saying it. It is so that lives will be saved. I keep saying it. This agitation being done, it is not for stomach infrastructure. People agitating for this restructuring and um, this restructuring now. They are not doing it because it is bringing milk and honey to their homes. Neither are they doing it because it is giving them more money or their account is being fattened. No, they are doing it because they are not feeling safe. They are afraid of what will happen tomorrow. For instance, now, yesterday we celebrated our Independence Day for those who celebrated it because I said yesterday, yesterday was supposed to be a national mourning day for us where we are going to mourn about the insecurity in the land, the killings. The land is continually being bathed in innocent blood and nothing is being done about it. And even when those who committed this set as comes out, what happens? The government said they have repented and they should be set free. It is no way supposed to be a National Independence Day. Now, in the early hours of yesterday, an attack was launched again in another community. People lost their lives. Exactly what I'm saying. This, is, this insecurity keeps going higher and higher, keeps creeping into other states in the country. If you are in Nigeria and you are thinking that for once that insecurity will not get to you, let me tell you, wake up. Wake up, it is going to be a reality that will hit every one of us soon. If this insecurity is not dealt with or if this restructuring is not given to Nigeria. This is what is happening. This is not um, like a story or this is not history. This is happening. It is happening and it's happening in front of our very eyes. So this is what these people are agitating for. They're not even agitating that things are going. They're agitating that let us save our lives first. Since you cannot give, you give us in Nigeria where we can be safe, let us create another country for ourselves where we are going to be safe. That is just it. Nobody is saying you should give. No, no, nobody. Nobody is saying give us this or give us that. They are saying let us save our life. That is why as news came to us today, I mean last week, that um, the federal government has done one or two good. The good things they are doing now is nothing because people are scared for their life. Even if you say that, okay, there's question of God, insecurity will not allow people to even acknowledge that, that particular fact. If you're being chased by a lion, what do you think of? Even if you are depressed, you're not even going to be thinking of that at that point in time. Even if you are hungry, you're not going to be thinking. You are going to be thinking of where you are going to, how you're going to get to a safe place so that you're not being eaten by the lion. That is exactly what is happening right now. You're saying that Nigeria is not going to be, or it is, their unity is not negotiable. It's like telling people to die for nothing. It's by telling people to stay put while they are eaten by lions. It is not fair and it is not right. The only right thing to do now is to ensure, okay, fine. If you say Nigeria's unity is not negotiable, make sure you make Nigeria very inhabitable for the citizens of Nigeria. That is all we are saying. Make sure everybody feels fairness and justice. Make sure everyone is feeling like a citizen. Make sure everyone does not feel less than a human. 
Make sure it happens in every of the region, not only in one region. And if that is the case, I do not think anybody will come out and say they want a restructuring. If Nigeria is that good, is that safe, there is justice, there is fairness, there is equity, there is nothing like any teasing that is going to divide us, then I do not think that Nigeria is a restructuring. But the fact that all these things are eminent and the federal government has refused to do anything concerning these issues, what will happen is, is that we are going to need to restructure. With this, we have come to the end of the news today. Thank you for tuning in to listen until I come your way next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.